in today's episode, I want to share with you the importance, the power, the magic, the beauty that arises when we co-create with our fellow goddesses, with kindred, kindred souls who are hearing the call to partner with nature in a totally new way, hearing the call to bridge spiritual wisdom with architecture and design, hearing the call to unleash your, your intuition, their intuition to to breathe in a new uh, breath into the way you design and practice mm -hmm. architecture with through through your feminine power your feminine magic your feminine impulse more and more as we step into the new paradigm mother gaia the angels the cosmos uh all of our spirit guides are asking us, calling us to step into a more heart-centered, compassionate approach to creating gardens, homes, sanctuaries, communities, cities that respect the rhythms and cycles of life, that respect the land, that respect our uh, our health, our vitality, our humanity. And, you know, I just got out of leading a two-day masterclass for an incredible group of um, high-achieving, spirit-conscious women architects and designers. And, you know, each time I get out of these, uh, these sessions, I'm blown away. I'm blown away by the breakthroughs, by the thresholds that are crossed, the, um, the transformations, and the, the success, and the, um, yeah, the success that women experience the uh, transformations again i said said that before that they experience within these sacred circles women's circles um now of course group work doesn't only have to be with women but i choose to hold the torch for you as a female architect and designer uh as we have been repressed for so long our magic our intuition our imagination has been repressed for so long and you know that came up a lot in the the master class where you know we women doubt whether their imagination is valid they doubt whether uh you know they doubt if they are actually receiving messages guidance from the spirit of the land from spirit and we have been programmed for so long that our imagination is not valid oh it's just a figment of your imagination oh it's it's uh you're just dreaming things it's just an illusion um whereas the truth is the actual truth is is that our imagination is a force of creation our imagination is a vehicle to connect with the nature spirits. Our imagination is a vehicle to connect with the angels, with cosmos, with the great spirit, with God, with source. And it's a very creative, imp uh, f uh, it's almost like this, like, it's a language. It's a, it's a wave of energy that when you ride that wave of energy of imagination when you tap into that current that power that that current that language that frequency then you're able to uh manifest designs projects with such ease and which with so much flow and you begin to reorient yourself uh in uh, you begin to reorient yourself into um, 
trusting your inner guidance, your inner authority. So many project failures, so many businesses fail because design practices or uh, projects fail because we waste so much time doubting ourselves. We waste so much time making mistakes because, um, and I'm not saying making mistakes is a bad thing. I mean, making mistakes, there's some gems, some uh, you know, right silver linings that you can find within a challenge or a mistake. But what I'm talking about is, is getting more laser precise and more efficient through tapping into your inner knowing, your inner truth, your true voice, your intuition, your imagination. It really streamlines project planning. It really streamlines your creative process and brings so much ease and so much joy to it. Another thing that came up during the master classes, you know, the um, and and also work the work that I'm doing with my my private clients is there's always this kind of this pressure of time, overwhelm of time, and we what what we've noticed in the group is that you know it was three hour sessions each each day but even those three hours of tapping into other dimensions of ourselves began to expand everyone's sense of time people start to kind of be able to really sit in the moment and the more that you be able to sit and 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 anchor in the moment the more time expands the more you're anchored in your truth the more you're anchored in your inner temple the more you listen to your capacity to tap source the more you open up to these realms the the less stress you get the less stressed you get um less panicky right i mean that just disappears and you um and then you're able to to focus on your work in a much more um flowing way in a much more flowing way another piece that's so important in group work in co-creation work is is that we are all gathering back pieces of ourselves. Um, and you're just, and, and I'm one, maybe some of you are like, okay, well, what does this have to do with building the new earth? What does this have to do with creating uh, energetically aligned properties for my clients? Well, I'll get there. I'll get there. The group work is really sacred. The co-creation work is this other aspect that I want to bring forward is is that we're we're picking up the pieces of ourselves that we have lost along the way on a collective level as well as an individual level. We are remembering our true power. We are remembering our creative gifts. We are remembering our divine, divine design capacities. We are remembering our, our feminine wisdom. We are, we are remembering our magical gifts. And as the, and other women are doing the same. And when we gather in circle, those parts of us you know, start to mirror each other and they they resonate with the with the other uh members of the group within the circle and when one light turns on for a woman a, a, you know an aha an awakening it turns on for the other and the other and the other and another and another and then this beautiful web of life of creativity starts to turn start is, is turned on is electrified that's actually what's coming forward now i'm starting to see this like these circuits of energy being activated because we are not separate from each other we are not separate from one another and the more that we 
speak our truth, the more we talk about the traumas, the 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 ostracization, the the stress, the depletion, the the pressure that we as women architects and designers have experienced, whether it be in our university studies or you know what we were studying at school or working in architecture offices or even running our own businesses, to be able to talk about them and to be able to um, receive each other's wisdom and support. And then and on a deep, deep level, that sacred listening, then things start to transform. That, that lead begins to transform into gold within you. Those the pieces of you that felt so separate from each other, um, the parts of you that felt so feel so lost, so unheard, um, traumatized, ignored, invisible, they all begin to take a position, an honorable position within your inner temple and within this the the sacred circle uh formed by by these these women i hope this is resonating with you i'm as i share this with you it's all landing on a whole other level and so i'm i didn't i haven't put much thought into what i was going to say in this podcast today and it's all unfolding as I share it with you. And that's the way I work very organically. Uh, I need to respond to, to my audience. Um, there's not much point in me over planning things. I jump into, I jump into the podcast, I jump into an event, I jump into leading a group, I jump into uh, writing an online course, for example knowing that I have women to serve who I'm responding to. Now, of course, I've been training a long time in alchemical energy healing, geomancy, land energetics, and have 20 plus years under my belt working as, a, as an architect, uh, intern architect, architect, various stages uh, within in, in firms at different parts of the world. Uh, so... There, there's a, you know, there's a certain culmination of experience and uh, wisdom that uh, is uh, right now a really ripe time for me to be sharing with the world. And I'm grateful for you as a listener to uh, feel that you feel the resonance with what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, as a fellow temple, ancient temple builder of the future, as a as a as a new earth architectress, I'm grateful that you are also hearing the call like I am, like I have been to build the new earth with uh, with your goddess power. Build the new earth with your goddess power and with your with with other women as well, doing it together in group, co-creating this new earth. We need each other. We need to build this movement. We need to do it together and uh, it will help when you work in a group, when you work in a group, it will, it helps you to uh, stay accountable for what you, you, the visions that you, you say you want to uh, accomplish. Um, you are very well held within a sacred circle and uh and all can be revealed. Uh, you, you're safe to, to show all parts of yourself. You know how, it, you know, working in offices can be awkward or working out in, you know, the, the architecture field. There's, a, there's certain hats that I certainly have felt like I needed to put on you know, when I'm out with the builders or when I'm in a meeting with the associates or amongst colleagues, it's like you could say you can say certain things, but not. And of course, I, you know, that 
I've, I've worked with different groups with different dynamics, different offices, and some were more open to the energy world and, you know, ecological architecture and spirit and others for sure. There's no way I would have been able to open up that conversation. And so the beauty of this two-day masterclass that I just led was that we could just be ourselves, that the women could be their selves, wear what they want, say what they want, and um, trust that that's all part of the process of laying the laying important foundations for our new earth. So it's like, the, the work that I'm bringing forward with the sacred blueprint, the work that I'm bringing forward with my mentorship programs for women architects and designers is about teaching you, guiding you, showing you a sacred walk on this earth. And this sacred walk isn't something that you do after office hours at like 8 p.m. or 6 p.m. when you go out and do your yoga practice. No, this sacred walk breathes through every aspect of your design practice. From writing agreements to planning out your, your offers to planning out your yearly business model to how you approach um your communication and work with builders on the construction site how you you design how you create your projects and and it's the i'm talking about the way the modality the process in which you do it there are a lot of architecture offices right now that talk about green architecture, that they're doing sustainable design, green architecture, ecological design, healthy, harmonious spaces. But when you, they're designing, the, they say that they're, they're creating these, these kinds of spaces. But when you look at how the office runs, it is often they are run with very rigid or... Um, and when I say rigid, I'm not against structure. I'm a big structures person. I, I have a lot of respect for systems. That's what's going to make your, your business successful, to stick with solid systems and boundaries and terms. But when I say so, but rigid is something different where you start to freeze up and there's no flow, there's no movement, there's no joy, there's no flexibility in the way that the offices run. And also what's ironic is that a lot of these offices, um, they, they don't even themselves, their spaces are not even full of life. There's no color, black, gray, white, rigid, um, furniture configuration of the desks and the the work desks people are just like you know lined up in some kind of a grid now of course some offices are much more um awake to those kinds of things and awake to the fact that a configuration within an office plan needs to have some life in it so that people are happy when they're working in their office. But a lot of architecture offices are boring, really, really boring. And so what my point is, is, and this could be, you know, you may be still carrying forward, maybe, you know, you're someone, high chance, you're someone who's like ready, who's ready to quit conventional architecture to pave this new way. Or maybe you've, you've, started your own design practice uh but you're you're still you're still for example um determining your fees based on the old consulting model or you're still um stuck to the 9 to 6 working hour model working in front of the computer so what what the new earth is about 
is also to flip upside down, shake up, reinvent the way you draw your drawings, the way you interact with your clients, the way you work on the construction site and bring that breath of the goddess into every single aspect of your, your work. So that's why I say you're walking, you're walking that impulse. So what does that look like for you? For me, it's about taking plenty of time outdoors in nature and connecting with the rocks, connecting with the trees, breaking up my day so I'm not in front of the computer the whole day. I've created a successful business model, design model on doing hand drawings. I don't need to do, do the computer work. Sometimes I do bring it in when necessary. And I'm certainly not uh, diminishing it. We need the computer, certainly. But so much of the computer and screen time has depleted me that I really need to just say, no, I don't want this anymore. And so I'm working in a way where I, I provide high level, sacred uh, journeys, guidance for property owners, women architects and designers, but I'll, I'll stay focused on the design work right now. And I take them through the sacred journey of the sacred blueprint and help them to learn how to walk the sacred walk so that they can connect with the essence of their property to learn about themselves, to transform themselves. So women, these sacred women's circles really help you to go deeper into all parts of yourself because they're all connected. It's all connected. When you're, when you're experiencing creative blocks, when you're experiencing lack of clients, lack of projects that really make your soul sing, when you're experiencing construction roadblocks, permit issues, when you're experiencing, yeah, just uh, burnout, right? You're going to need to take a look at all parts of yourself and be open to transforming things that you never even knew existed within your being to take this next step. It could be fear, fear of being ostracized by the architecture community. I've shared this with you before. That's, that was a huge fear of mine. It could be fear of being visible. Fear of asking for too much money, right? A lot of people are scared of stepping out of the employee structure, the dollars for hours. It's all based on the dollars for hours. I don't care if architects charge fixed fees or not. It's all rooted in this dollars for hours model. I've discovered a world that you can step out of that. You can step out of that and make a whole whole lot more of money with while working less throughout the year while opening portals and windows into other aspects of your creativity you need to bring those in women that was a big theme too in our in our master class this past week i'm so into i'm into photography i'm into uh esoteric studies i'm into connecting with you know light beings i'm into you know, there's just so many different layers to us and there there's there are voices in society that tell us that we need to choose one thing and stick with it we need to choose one thing and 
if we're going to be an architect, we need to look and act a certain way. We need to do projects a certain way. Our website needs to look a certain way. That's not the way of the feminine women. It's not the way of the feminine. I'm now bringing in alchemical healing work into my work. I'm now bringing in my love of hand drawings. I'm now bringing in my love of working with wood with my hands and building out on the, the construction site with the builders, right? Even though I'm just like I'm learning as I go most of the time, right? I'm weaving in my love for taking care of my son, you know, and really nourishing him, nourishing my family with good food. I'm weaving in my love for hiking up in the mountains. I love walking in the mountains. I love uh, walking through trails and discovering new, new sacred power spots in the region by myself. I'm weaving in all of that work. It's so much fun, women, to break up the day with all this juiciness. Rather than oh, the office. And I mean, some of you may be working online. I mean, after COVID, a lot of those structures started to break up. Um, but I am with, you know, in conversation with a lot of women that are still in that stuck in that that uh, structure. And you just it, it can be a vicious cycle. You can't get out. And now there's the recession. There's a recession going on in North America. And I mean, all over the world, there's, you know, he, challenges with uh, increase in uh, labor costs, increase, you know, the in, inflation, um, food prices are going up, resources are diminishing, right? And so people are hanging on to their money, but that's also on another level, a story, another pair, uh, uh, another reality um, that if you get stuck in it, you can cons persistently be in this survival mode consciousness. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, being responsible with your, your finances is wrong. We've got to be very balanced here. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I'll spend all of my money because I know I'm going to manifest the rest of it. I mean, we got to be, of course, um, balanced in our decision making around finances. And I tell you, women, I've changed the trajectory of my life by taking a huge risk by quitting my job, taking that big leap you know, entering into a, a business coaching program that was way, I, I just, I, I didn't even understand. I couldn't even believe how I could pay the, the, the investment of that coaching program off. And I did it. I did it. When you say yes, when you make a decision, when you make a decision with your full bodied yes, the the angels and the cosmos will open the way the open the way for you to and they'll bring you all kinds of abundance and opportunities now does it mean you just wait for you know do you, does it mean that you wait for you know the stars to align and the the, the moon to be in the right uh position or uh phase and, you know, consistently look at your astrology to find like what the perfect day is to quit or to do this or what year it is, what year you should, um, you know, make that decision to quit or to, to make the big leap and, and finally do the thing that you, the work that you desire. Um, okay, that, that took a long time for me to say that. <laughs> No, I don't mean that because sometimes when we're too much in our feminine, then we don't get anything done. 
So making a firm decision and stop playing the victim and stop blaming people around you for your life situation is the first step. And that's, that's a masculine energy. Stop. Make the decision. It's time. You know, you know, you know what your soul wants. You don't have to see every single step forward laid out in front of you. But follow that call, women. Follow that call. I tell you, the women in the master class, they were just lit up by the end of it and their truth was anchored it was anchored in the earth and it sent ripples of light onto this whole planet they're lifted up these women lifted up nourished juiced up and left the master class with inspiration with fire with motivation to take their next steps into building their prospering design practices aligned with spirit, aligned with their divine calling, so they can make a big impact on planet Earth. I've shared this before in a, another episode. It is your responsibility to use your spiritual gifts to save this planet. It is your responsibility to use your spiritual gifts to save this planet and to save humanity. Imagine the architecture that you will create. Imagine the interior designs that you'll create, the garden architecture, the garden designs that you'll create, the land art, the, the urban plans, the cities the master plans that you'll create with this powerful impulse. And you know what? When you tap your imagination and intuition and your feminine goddess wisdom, you never do the work alone. You do it with other kindred women in circle. But also, also what you do is you co-create with the spirit of the land. You co-create with the angels, the light beings, the subtle energies that are present, that are responsible for forming nature. You get to co-create with these energies because they're waiting for us. They're waiting for us and looking down on us and saying, what an incredibly beautiful gift to be a human being. They're waiting. They wait for that time, that ripe time when you are ready to take that step and to co-create with them because they can't do what we do. They're not the ones with the physical hands and the physical feet, the physical legs to walk this earth and to build, to build these structures that will be and are the vessels for humanity's transformation. No matter what kind of project you work on, it could be an apartment design, it could be a shed project, a simple fire pit with a beautiful, with a beautiful stone terrace and water fountain garden with you know, beautiful land art, all the way to a huge community project for the new earth. You can breathe the breath of the goddess into every single kinds of projects that you work on and into the way you partner with your clients. This is so key. Nobody's talking about this enough. How do you take this sacred approach to birthing your client to help your clients to birth their dream sanctuaries and remove yourself as the, the ego architect, right? Remove yourself 
from that role. Not saying that you don't have, that you relinquish your power or your ability to be a leader, to, to say no when it's necessary and to say, you know what, this is going to be a much better approach to this, you know, house project, et cetera. But, you know, too many architects are just really wanting to, to build their own fantasies instead of, instead of, instead of building something that is really unique and custom tailored to their client's uh, unique signature energy, their soul, their dreams, their visions, what lights them up. We're all different. I believe Frank Lloyd Wright had a quote like that. And I don't, I'm not going to be able to, to say it word for word, but he said something like, there should be as many different kinds of house styles or houses as there are human beings, individuals. Right? So women. Oh, it was such an inspiring two days in this masterclass. And I want to share also that during the masterclass, I made a special announcement that doors are open to my architect studio, which begins April 11th. It's a three month group program for women architects and designers. And we are going to dive into what I call the three spheres of my sacred blueprint mentorship program. The first sphere is going deep into the, the shadow work, the sacred work, going into your inner temple, discovering what your mission is, what your soul's purpose is, and letting go of parts of you that need to be laid down to rest. And there's a lot that there's, there's, there's a lot of exercises and journeys and meditations and exercise, I've said exercises that guide you towards stepping into your new skin and shedding the old skin. The other sphere is learning how to listen to the land, the, the land, the energetics of the land, the nature spirits, learning dousing skills, learning how to co-create with the land and listen, do the sacred listening that's required to birth, help your clients, or in your, if you are working on your own home project, birth the optimal blueprint for that particular property without stress, without strain, without overworking, without over-designing. So we get, I get into that, the, whole, the whole realm of land energetics, and I teach you how you can apply that to your own work. The third zone is support with your business. How are we going to support? How are you going to uh, build a, a business that really nourishes your soul and gives you plenty of time to be with your family, plenty of time to be out in nature, plenty of time to, to feed yourself with good food, and and gives you the opportunity to to express your true voice your true creativity how are you going to attract the ideal clients the ideal projects there are some tips in terms of marketing and branding uh, that i've learned along the way that i'm i'm happy to to share with you delighted in my joy to share with you and you know we get down and detailed in looking at ingre uh, looking at agreements, looking at your program offers or your packages. Notice I'm not using the word consultant fees. So I'm helping women to step out of that consultant model and more into the artist that you are, the creator being that you are. the priestess that you are, the mentor that you are, the teacher that you are. It's not a consultant fee practice, okay? Now, of course, every woman has her own way of 
that that is in tune with her own energy and we're going to to support you in in determining what that ideal vehicle is for your business what that ideal structure is you also within that realm you're also going to start to develop your own modality learn your unique gifts and how you can weave it in your own way into your design work into your own design practice and that's where the group work gets really fun because we start to like oh well, maybe you can do this and you can weave this into your work have you seen it have you looked at it with this perspective etc cetera, etc cetera. all right women i have a meeting i'm that i'm late to actually a couple minutes uh with my business manager so I'm so delighted and excited to invite you to the Architect Studio. I'm we are working on the the sign up page. I'm going to I'm you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add the um the application to apply for this program within this this podcast episode and yeah, I think my team will have the uh, the landing page ready too. So you might see that also in this in this uh, in the detail section of this podcast episode. So we begin April 11th. It's a three month program. You do need to apply. The program is not for everyone. This is for high achieving women architects and designers who are committed to shift and change. Stop playing victim. Stop play, blaming others change your life, change your situation, and start to build the new earth in the way that you are meant to build, the, the way that you are meant to create. All right, women, talk to you next episode. Bye.